Welcome to Unit 3. You should be wrapping up your review of Holy Gatherings this week as the Holy Gatherings book review is due during Unit 4. See the class calendar for the exact due date. We are also providing instruction videos during this unit that cover the rubrics associated with the worship observations and designs. These videos will also provide a sample order of worship. The point of this sample is not to suggest a particular model, but rather to encourage you with the reality that you are closer to being ready to design a service than you might think. Your worship assessment criteria is also due soon, so the videos will include some ideas for worship assessment. Please note that at least a portion of these videos will not be readily understood without reading Woodward's Introduction to the History of Worship from Unit 2. If you have not read this material, please do so before viewing the instructional videos. You may even consider having the Introduction to the History of Worship document accessible while watching the videos in case you need to pause and compare to references in that material. Regarding your worship assessment criteria, I want to encourage you to spend some time this week thinking through a taxonomic structure for your observation mechanism. You might recall that in Unit 1, I presented a taxonomy for the process of being equipped in worship leadership. I referred to the five foundations of worship leadership, biblical, theological, historical, cultural considerations, and aesthetic considerations. You could use this taxonomy to categorize your questions for your worship assessment criteria, but I would prefer that you spend some time thinking through your own taxonomic structure for your questions. This is an important exercise for your graduate studies in general. As an undergrad, you were primarily presented with taxonomies with perhaps no reference to the reality that you were being asked to process someone's taxonomy within a given field of study. At the master's level, you are asked to compare taxonomies. In fact, you could actually view your textbooks as taxonomies. Your Holy Gathering book introduces a three-part taxonomy for observing and designing worship, aesthetic, blended, and kinesthetic worship. The Exploring the Worship Spectrum textbook offers a six-part taxonomy, formal liturgical, traditional hymn-based, contemporary, charismatic, blended, and emerging. For the Worship Assessment Criteria Project, we want you to think about a taxonomy that makes sense to you for observing worship. You might recall the challenge at the end of the Incarnation chapter regarding the five-part taxonomy I have suggested. I noted that without prayer, we won't be able to achieve true incarnational worship. Thus, I want to encourage you to be prayerful about your taxonomic contemplations. I realize one of the challenges in seminary is that the academic process can tend to eat away at the vitality of your daily walk with Christ. In this cl class, one way to integrate your study with spiritual formation is quite practical by seeing your daily devotion is worship, and perhaps by intentionally integrating some worship materials into your study in addition to your primary worship material, that being the Word of God. For example, you might consider including the singing of a hymn during personal worship. But this week in particular, I want to offer this additional challenge of integrating your contemplations over a worship assessment tool into your prayer life. Notice that both of these challenges are encapsulated in Colossians 3, 16-17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through the Father, through Him. What an amazing summation of a life of worship, perhaps even worth memorizing this semester. Regarding your discussion question for this week, we will continue the process of encouraging biblical studies on the topic of worship. This week you will all be looking at the same passage, that being Christ's seminal teaching on worship in John 4, where Jesus declares to the woman at the well, you worship what you do not know, we worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Please note that this passage is referenced in the Introduction to the History of Worship document, but you are free to interact with the passage according to your best understanding of what is being communicated. 
Once again, we hope that your interactions with classmates will prove fruitful. I encourage you to interact with someone this week in your group with whom you have not yet interacted.